Professor June, we're so glad to have you here. Can you give us a brief summary of CAR-T in the past decade? Uh, so CAR-Ts now have been uh, approved for commercial use since about 2017 in leukemia and then in 2018 in lymphoma. And so now we have um, gone from a handful of academic trials with literally very few patients to now I just saw numbers more than 20,000 patients have been treated uh, with CAR T cells. Uh, so we've witnessed a huge growth. And um, that's been, I think, the, um, the amazing thing now is we've seen it go from a few academic centers to being generally used in uh, uh, Europe and throughout the US. You mentioned the growth in usage. How is the landscape of CAR T evolving in terms of innovative treatment, efficacy, and cost? Yeah, there are a number of issues. Um, you know, the therapy was initially approved for uh, very late and advanced cases. And so now, over this last year, major advances in that um, randomized trials from uh, both Bristol Myers uh, and um, uh, have shown, and Kite Gilead, that uh, in second line treatment now, um, that they were positive. So that's a major advance. Uh, today we've seen meetings, uh, I mean, presentations that in myeloma, they're moving earlier stage and um, rather than in very advanced uh, patients. And the initial data is that it works better in earlier stage patients. With an increasing number of patients who acquire CAR-T treatment, how can the health system cope with the high costs of treating this increasing number of patients? You know, so one issue has been, um, so cell therapies are more expensive to produce um, and then um, many other kinds of drugs and treatments. In, in general, cell and gene therapies are the most expensive that we have, but yet they have the most promise. Um, and I think that, um, so one issue is that the cost of goods to make cells is expensive, it's human labor. And uh, we've seen a number of uh, advances where the manufacturing has been short, shortened and then also automated. The most expensive part of a CAR T cell is actually the human labor. Uh, so now what we're seeing is automation uh, and which can drastically reduce the cost. And um, the other main thing is more scientific where um, a number of companies and, and academic centers are testing so-called allogeneic or off-the-shelf CAR T cells, like coming from uh, healthy donors or cord blood and um, uh, pluripotent stem cells. So those then can be made in large batches, more like a standard pharmaceutical treatment, and then given to patients, and that would reduce the cost dramatically. That's interesting, Professor June. How realistic is this expectation of cost reduction in the immediate future? Well, you know, the, unfortunately, the cost of drugs is depends on what uh, geographic location you are. So it's a very complex issue in the United States. It's different than in Europe, and that's different than Japan. Uh, I think, uh, so one thing is the science has to improve to lower the cost, and then the, the other issue is the pricing of the drugs. Uh, so there's an institute in the United States in Boston called ICER, uh, and uh, I-C-E-R, and what they do is analyze the value of the treatment. And they've shown that, um, the, you know, the assumption in the US and Europe is that each year of life that you save that's healthy is worth about, in dollars, $130,000. and. So it's now shown that the cell therapies when, um, you know, particularly for leukemia are, are a very good value, even at this very um, high cost because the other therapies fail. And um, so um, right now what we do is usually, I like to say it's more like death by a thousand cuts. So currently what our healthcare system does is have smaller but chronic costs of a, which is eventually usually a failing therapy. And that adds up to a lot of money. So there's data in that was in a Wall Street Journal article a few years ago 
Um, you know, the biggest landscape change over the last year has been myeloma, where now BCMA cars have been approved in Europe and, and in uh, USA. And that issue is it's the most common blood cancer. So now, rather than a rare cancer like pediatric leukemia, it's the most common adult blood cancer. And in the U.S., um, the patients in general pay about $10,000 a month for their therapy. And so in, um, when I was in medical school, the average survival of myeloma was two or three years, and now it's eight to 10 years. But that's at a cost now of, it, it exceeds about millions of dollars of cumulative cost. Often it go and pass with the patient's insurance in the U.S., where they have limits, uh, lifetime limits. So what we're seeing is um, myeloma has what's uh, the classic case of what they call financial toxicity. There's the toxicity from the therapies, but myeloma is, it's only 2% of all the cancer in the United States, but it's 7% of all the expenses for cancer care. And that's because now the patients are living longer, but it's very expensive. So. Just like with vaccines, it would be better to do it up front and prevent it, you know, rather than have late stage advanced myeloma and treat it time and time again, you know, uh, with a non-curative therapy. So, so we have the medicine has to get better, the cost of manufacturing has to get better, and hopefully competition can lower the cost. But that is that depends on where one lives as to whether competition will, will matter. What can you tell us about the next frontier of CAR-T, which appears to be solid tumors? So, yeah, the, the biggest issue really now is, I mean, I think all blood cancers will have a kind of cell therapy um, over the next 10 years, at the biggest remaining unmet medical needs, uh, AML, acute myeloid leukemia. But in the case of solid cancers, uh, we haven't had you know, dramatic responses like there have been in blood cancer with CAR T cells. And there's a lot of reasons for that. It's um, in blood cancer, we have these lineage antigens like CD19 and BCMA that we know you can live without those cells. Um, but we don't usually have that in solid tumors. So there's a target problem. And one way around that is, is to use T cell receptors. And there's some very promising data that T cell receptors will be working in solid cancers um, uh, and, and also, uh, for instance, uh, sarcolos. Um, but then the, uh, the other problem in solid tumors is that they're very complex and basically make a, um, um, uh, a challenging and toxic environment for the immune system. So when the cells, T cells get in there, they get very quickly stopped to work. and um, Whereas that doesn't happen in the bone marrow of where leukemia is, because T cells normally live in the bone marrow. So the metastatic solid cancer is a big challenge. The good hopeful part about it is that there's many, there are many now mouse experiments uh, where uh, cell therapies have, have been shown now to work. And so now we need to translate those into human trials and hopefully we'll see progress. Um, well, this, there are now two patients with um, uh, T cell receptors, the, who were treated with T cell recept receptors against uh, mutated RAS, so KRAS, which is um, about 15 or 20% of all human cancer is, is a RAS mutation. And uh, so these T cell receptors were able to eliminate metastatic, in one case it was pancreatic cancer, and the other was colorectal cancer. So it's very exciting to see progress like that, but that's still early stage phase one trials.